So you can choose any digital coloring solution you think is most appropriate, but I need you to know all of them for your course content. So I have overdone it, right? I've used full spectrum, I've used color holds, I've used special effects, I've used duotone hard edge and soft edge, and of course, the bare minimum you need is flat color. So at this point, if I want to submit it with everything, even with the special effect little glints, I would turn off all of the backgrounds, right? And then this is actually what I recommend. If you're going to go to the full extent of doing all of this, hold down option and then say layer merge visible. So you have all of your color and line art and everything just in one layer on the top. And then what I like to do is I change the blending mode from, well, first thing I do is I go to image and I say auto tone. And that will balance out the histogram. Mine's already pretty balanced, so it didn't make a huge difference. Then I'm going to go to um, the layer blending mode, and I'm going to change it to dissolve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the levels, and I'm just going to tweak them a little bit so the darks are a little bit darker and the brights are a little bit brighter, but not so much that it blasts out, right? And then I'm going to use dissolve, and I'm just going to take the opacity down. And what you're going to see that it does is gives me a slight texture. Which to me makes digital graphics a lot more palatable. Like they're made of construction paper or something. Another thing you can do is actually do a texture overlay. If you remember that from compositing. And I'm just going to do um, rag paper. That's cotton or linen art paper texture. This is another way you can get that kind of subtle variation over the top of everything. And these are just kind of finishing techniques. And this one looks pretty good. Doesn't need to be huge. I'm going to drag and drop that on. I'm going to, just like a texture overlay, it's on the top of everything. I'm going to stretch it so that it covers everything. Then I'm going to set it to a mode I think is helpful. I think soft light is a good one. Right? And you can see, even at 100% opacity, how that's kind of making it more like watercolor coloring. So it gives it more variation, but the problem is I lose a lot of my, my line art, right? So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go to my base color and I'm going to select, even though it's locked, everything around my base color. And then I'm going to delete that from this watercolor paper. And then next I'm going to go into my black lines and select all those black lines. Actually, I want contiguous turned off. So I want it to get everywhere, right? And then delete that from my, my watercolor kind of paper. Or what I can do is leave it on, but then use my eraser while it's selected and just knock it down by about 30%, right? And there's just so much you can do. And then I maybe take this percentage down a little bit more, or I change it to overlay instead of soft light and take it down a lot more. You know, so I get those kind of variations in the coloring. Does that make sense? So that's, that's basically like the very most you can do <laughs> to mess with your image. Okay, now I'm going to save my work. And what's nice about that combined layer too is I can now use dodge and burn just on it. And where I burn it, I'm going to see more of that texture come through because it's on dissolve. 
And these are just all the kind of tricks that people making digital graphics for fine art, for commercial work, you'll see them use. to help with their visual communication, right? And if I feel like I need to darken it even where there's highlights, I can just shift the, the settings to be able to do that, right? So I can give a little bit of this dissolved texture into everything. Now remember, this is all safe because this is all on another layer, right? It's like a sandwich. So I'm never doing something that I can't then modify with opacity or something else. All right. I take this down. Okay, so I'm going to save my work, going to turn off all my backgrounds, and then I'm going to save it for the last time as a PNG, but this time I'm going to call it final <laughs> full color as a PNG, either to the desktop or to my assignment. And now I have all those options built in to my Photoshop file at the full resolution of 16 by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch. So if I view it at full size, 100%, it's really high quality in terms of its pixel resolution, which will work well for when we use it in a poster. But the poster might mean I do even crazier things with it. So we'll get to that with assignment six. All right, so now I go to Canvas and close this texture fill. And go to the assignment. And I'm not going to, sometimes, you know, when I have time in, in previous semesters, I would post each step, the duotone hard edge, the duotone soft edge, the full spectrum, the color holds, the special effects. But flat color is your bare minimum. Just choose the right colors, right? And then... Your ultimate, let's see, where is I think it's this one. Whatever you decide is full color is full color for you. And this is my final full color illustration. And it's got everything. The other thing that's important that I see some of you have gotten away from already is that in my Photoshop file, my line art is still a vector. It's still a smart object. It hasn't been rasterized. So when I do color holds, I make a duplicate of it, and then I rasterize the duplicate. But I never lose my vector, right? So I'm going to call this final full color spot illustration. Saved as a PNG. And PSD, right? Because you need that PSD for the next assignment. Okay, so those are my inspirations. That was my sketch. Cleaned up my sketch, made vector line art, just filled in the colors using random flat colors, right? Then started to play with those colors, changed them up a bit to reflect the campus a little bit better, and now all those different techniques, which might be too much. And then if you want to, if you go to links, once you're at this stage, since it's the last video for assignment five, you'll see that there is a link to a site that I recommend called Redbubble. And Redbubble is where you can start an account. It's free. You just need an email. If you want to sell to the public, you also give it a PayPal. And you can put up your spot illustrations, right? And what I like it for students is here, if I add a new work, I'll have to verify I'm a human. Okay. Now what I do is I just take that, that full color PNG, 
that I just made. Yep, my final full. I drag it on with the background turned off. And I'm going to call this TikTok Nico. And then it will allow me to put it onto all these different products, right? So if I edit this, I can say, well, what does it look like on a dark blue shirt? And then I can like place it, size it on a green shirt, on a red shirt, right? That's where the offsets help. And any products I don't want to see, I can just turn off. Let's do a navy blue. And as long as you have a high quality, I love the stickers. Stickers are great. But as long as I have a high quality image, you know, let's make a mouse pad. I have all the options in the world. So I can make it really small, but then make it into a pattern like an offset grid pattern with a hex color background of dark blue. And now there's a mouse pad, right? And I can use those settings to make shower curtains, to make leggings, journals, just everything, right? The diversity of it. Canvas bags. On and on and on. Mask, backpacks, all that kind of stuff. Now, here's the real thing that's really helpful. If you're not sure of your intellectual property, like if you're doing fan art, you can post it so it's only you that sees it, right? So it's not public facing. Only when you're logged into your account can you see it, which means you can order products, right? But you can even set them up for your own use right if you want to sell at a convention or something but then you're not on the internet showing how you're blatantly infringing on someone's usage rights which i don't want any of you to do we studied that a lot so that you know not how to infringe on other people's rights and to protect your own rights all right so then what happens if you do put up something like if i did my own t-shirt of hello kitty it depends whether i used hello kitty in my tags or not whether I am, that is automatically taken off the site within the first week, or if it takes a month or so for them to find me and kick me off the site and also send me a cease and desist letter. But either way, it's not worth it. So when, when unsure, make it so it's only viewable to you. And that's a good idea anyway. So you can see, oh, I didn't mean to have that product available that way. You know, I want to edit that still. Make sense? So. Spot illustrations, almost as versatile as logos. And you can do the same thing with logos. All right, our next project. I'll start in the next video, but give you a little hint. It's going to be using our spot illustrations and then turning them into posters. Think of it as an ad campaign, right? What do you need to add to your imagery in order to make a full flyer poster ad advertising posting you need text so we're going to be designing text and there's kind of a few different components to this there's the black text the color text and then the final poster and a useful step is doing what's called type blocking or text blocking which i will show you but this is what we're going to be doing adding it to our spot illustration some of you will have very simple text, some of you will have more complex text, but we need to design it ourselves. We'll talk a little bit more about it, but I've already decided that for my assignment six, I kind of like the whimsy of this, but I already sketched out my text blocking and it's going to be this. And I'm going to be inspired by TikTok posters. So instead of, of TikTok or instead of Nico, it's going to be Nick Knock. And largely inspired by the kind of offset of the TikTok logo.